Let's go back to the arms and add a few more variables to the arms to make them function properly. What I mean is that we've separated the arm joints into three separate bones. Each of these bones smooths the mesh deformation in a twist situation. So we'd rotate each of these bones in smaller increments to make the arm look like it's twisting properly. The problem with this is we'd have to animate six bones instead of just two. So we should automate the twist with an expression. Let's go to the Animate tab and we'll reset all the keyframes for this forearm. Let's go to the Commands tab. You can see our commands that have been organized. We're just going to stay outside the hierarchy for now. Create a new variable. We'll call this one Nate underscore wrist twist R. Let's switch to a top view. Middle mouse click on wrist R. We'll center the selection with the A key. We'll highlight bank, which will twist the wrist around the bone selection. None of the other bones are following along, so we need to change that. While bank is selected, we'll go to the expressions tab and right click on the buffer to add that to the expressions field. Now middle mouse click on forearm 3R, make sure bank is selected. We'll go to the channels, activate this blank check mark to make the current selection active, and we'll add that. You can see bank pops immediately. Do the same thing for forearm 2R, make sure bank is selected, and we'll add that as well. See bank does a little twist here on the forearm 2R. That's because during setup we'd rotated this 90 degrees. Look at bank, it reads that as well. So set the, set the interpolation mode to additive. So they take the current value of your rotation and add that on top of its default state. So now the arm twists properly. Let's shut this down and do the exact same thing to the bicep. Middle mouse click and highlight bicep 1R. We'll create a new variable and call this one Nate underscore bicep twist R. Highlight bank, go to the expressions tab, right mouse click on the buffer to add that to the expressions field. Middle mouse click and highlight bicep 2R, select bank, and go to the channels tab and we'll add that as the current channel to the selection. Do the same thing on bicep 3R and change their interpolations to be additive so they add on top of their current setup position. So when we grab bicep R and bank it, everything else banks. You can see it kink over. That's because we had heading selected when we added bicep 3R. Go down to the channels tab here and under heading just select bank and now it's fixed. If it rotates too much we can set this to rotate in a smaller increment just by altering the expression. We'll do a divide by 2 so it doesn't bank as much. Now that's pretty easy. The next thing we want to do is we want to add control, we want to add an IK control that can fade between our forward kinematics, what we currently have, and inverse kinematics, control right from the wrist. Forward kinematics means you have to select the root of your control, alter it, then select the next one down the chain, alter it, and the next one down the chain, manually keyframing the position from the base to the tip. Inverse kinematics means you grab the wrist and move the wrist to that position. Forward kinematics is great. There's no replacement for it. You can set fewer keyframes with forward kinematics and it has built-in arcs, great for follow-through animation. However, there are some circumstances that require the use of inverse kinematics. For example, putting his hand on a table. If you were doing this all in forward kinematics, you'd have to manually keyframe every single frame to make the hand look like it was static on the table. So let's add an IK control to this hand. Let's go to Setup. We're going to add a null under the Add block called Nate underscore IK hand R. Just a plus key to add that to the list and we'll select this and drag this to the bottom of the list. That way it's easier to find in the pull down menus and it's in the world space. Let's move this over and match the position and orientation of the wrist R bone. Use the A key to center your selection. Position this right on top. Adjust the heading so Z is also facing out along the bone. Close enough. 
we're going to add a smaller bone to this that the hand actually attaches to. So just pick any bone in the hierarchy, use the plus key to add another bone and parent that to IK hand R. We'll zero out the Z translate and we'll adjust the length of this bone so it's fairly small. Also go to the bone tab and change the slip to one so it doesn't distort any of the mesh. We'll call this bone attach hand R. Let's go to the commands tab and set up an IK chain for it. Switch to a top view. You can see we've already done keyframe animation. Later on we'll make a slider that blends between the keyframe position and the IK position. But first we have to set up the IK. So create a new variable and we'll call this one Nate underscore IK align hand R. Go to the expressions tab and look for an expression in the pull down menu called IK2D. Take a look at the arguments here. Middle mouse click and highlight bicep 1R. We'll add that as the root. Middle mouse wrist R. That will be the end. And then over here on our IK null, middle mouse and select attach hand R, which will be our end effector. One to align, one to turn it on, and right mouse click on the pull down menu to add that to the expression and make it active. So now we have positional control in IK on our hand. You'll also notice that it's bending kind of funky in this area. That's because the IK calculation is sharing the angle amongst all of the joints that we've added. So set the pitch stiffness on these two end joints of the forearm and bicep to one. Go to the animate tab, go to the inverse kinematic sub tab, and set the pitch stiffness to one. Forearm one R stays the same. It needs to bend there, that's the elbow. Middle mouse click on bicep two R, pitch stiffness to one. Same thing for bicep three R. So now the only thing that should be bending is the bicep at the elbow and the shoulder. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that the hand stays aligned to our null. So go back to the commands tab. We'll create a new variable. Call this one Nate underscore align hand R. Go to the expressions tab. Look inside the pull down menu for an expression called align. Do the same thing we did for the IK. Let's middle mouse click on wrist R, which will align to our tiny bone in the null called attach hand R. One to turn it on, and right mouse click on the pull down, on the button next to the pull down to add that to the expressions. You'll notice that the forearm stays twisted. That's because there's still keyframe data on the bank on wrist R. It's just being overridden by the expression. We can still bank the wrist. So it's one extra keyframe. You're always keyframing the wrist when you're doing forward kinematics. So bank the wrist until the forearm matches up with it when you're animating with IK. Right now this is full time IK. That is, every time we move the null the hand will stay attached to it. We don't have any choice to turn this into forward kinematics. So we'll create a slider that blends between our forward kinematics and our IK null. Let's close down these expressions and go back into setup. Under the pull down menu in the add block, select slider this time. And we'll call this one Nate underscore IKFK hand R. The plus button to add that to the scene. We'll drag this down and parent it to IK hand R. We will only need to use one of these sliders, so we should hide the rest of them. Right mouse click on the colors to make them disappear. And we can change the default name, which is XPOS or X position, to Nate underscore FK. A couple of more underscores IK hand R. That way we know that this is the right hand and we'll be switching between the two. While this slider is highlighted, let's go back to the command tab and stick it in a spot where we can use its little bit of code. Left mouse click on the buffer to add that to the buffer. This just puts it in text form that, that allows us to copy and paste on our expression. So we'll go to the variables tab, we'll make a new variable. We'll call this one Nate underscore fade IK hand R. Go back to the expressions and we're going to look for an expression called key fader. The expressions are in alphabetical order so just go right to the K's. There's a couple of arguments inside key fader that are somewhat confusing. 
We'll build this exactly the same way as the IK constraints. We'll middle mouse click on the objects that are being affected by our IK and KeyFader will disable them and let us use our keyframed animation. So bicep 1R is selected. We'll add that to the selection. Let's read the description here. Start frame and end frame we will set to zero so it looks at the current frame. The channels that it's going to be affected are the motion channels. That includes scale, rotate, and translate. One is the percentage that it should apply this fade to. One means it goes completely to our keyframe position. Zero means it goes right back to the IK position. We're going to make that keyframeable by adding our slider position inside there instead of putting a number in. So copy from the buffer our IKFK hand R and we'll paste that. So instead of putting a 100% application on, it looks at the slider to apply a percentage to it. Let's right click on that to add that to the expression. And we need to do something else to this expression. Right now it's only going to fade the bicep. So we need to add all the other bones that are affected by IK. Middle click on forearm 1R. We'll add that to the expression and we'll make this one a longer expression. Tap the plus key and then right mouse click and we've added our forearm. Middle mouse click and highlight wrist R. We'll add that to the build go all the way to the end of this expression again plus key right mouse click and add that so now we have all of our joints affected by IK being disabled by our key fader because the command tab executes from the top down key fader happens last which allows us to use all of our other expressions and then fade them afterwards let's try that out let's go into animate tab go down to the bottom of the list and select IKFK hand R. We drag the slider over to one. We have control in keyframe positions. So now we can grab our arm and shift them around. We go back and highlight IKFK hand and move it back. It goes back to our control on the null. We still have control over everything else such as how the arm looks when we rotate it one way or the other. go back to the top view and when you're in IK control to adjust the way the forearm rotates grab the wrist R and rotate it as if you were animating it forward kinematics let's go hide the bones we don't need we'll never touch attach hand R so red lock that and change its draw mode to N middle mouse click on bicep 1 R and hold down the control key, select bicep 2R, 3R, forearm 2R, and 3R, and we will red lock and hide those. We'll select bicep 1R and unlock that and change it back so its visibility is still there. So now we have our forward kinematic controls visible and our IK controls visible. Let's go to a front view. Let's mirror this across. We have IK hand right selected. Tap the divide key on the keypad to mirror IK hand R over and we'll just manually change these to L for the left side. Go to the commands tab and we'll mirror these constraints across as well. You know, the variables tab, we'll copy the variable and we'll do the same thing we've done on the fingers. Change them to L and under the channels we'll go to the channels and change the selection to the left side. Forearm 2R gets changed to forearm 2L. Copy the next one. Change the R underscore 1 version to L change the expressions to match and the channels that get fed in the channels tab to their left side counterpart. Bicep 3R gets changed to bicep 3L. IK align hand, we'll copy that one. Change that to L. Open up the expressions. 
and L, L, L. We can increase the size here so we can see the entire expression. Align hand, change the aligned hand R underscore one version to L. Make sure that you don't overwrite any commas when you're editing this or else the expression will show up pink and complain to you. The fade IK hand is the longest expression. Let's copy that one and we may have to zoom in and out to take a look at it. Change bicep 1R to L, IK FK hand R to L, forearm 1R to L, hand R to L, and just keep going down the list. So now we should have the same thing going on on the left hand here. Go to a top view. We still have the IK stiffnesses to set because those are set inside the animate tab. Go to animate with the inverse kinematics. We'll just set the pitch to 1 on bicep 2L and bicep 3L. The forearm 2L and forearm 3L do the same thing. So now we have complete control over the hand with the IK. We change hand left to fade in and out. You'll notice that it, all, that it still says Nate FK IK hand R. We need to go back in and change that. So go into setup. And under the left side of the slider, just toggle the name of the slider to match. So it's L. So we have L and R. Do the same thing to this hand. We can do it inside the Animate tab or the Setup tab. Just middle mouse click on Bicep 2L. We'll, we'll Control Select Bicep 3L, Forearm 2, and Forearm 3. Red lock those and change the draw modes to N so we don't have to look at them. So now all that's visible on our arms are the inverse kinematics controls. and the null controls. Let's go to the command tab and let's position these inside the hierarchy that we set earlier. So let's expand that hierarchy. We're going to close down all of the nodes here so we just see our expression names. And underneath Nate expression we'll create a new variable. We'll call this one Nate underscore arms exp. Shift select everything underneath that and parent that to the arms. Close that down and parent that to Nate underscore exp. It's important that this is on the very end because of the way the command tab executes from top to bottom. We go down to the bottom, these need to execute last so all of our IK aligns function properly. Go to the file tab and we're going to save this scene as Nate set up e.fxs.